right. So it is four o'clock. I think I will get started, but I'll talk slowly so that if anyone else comes in a bit late, we can still have those people get all the content they need to. So hello, everyone. Uh, hopefully a lot of you are going into a long weekend. So excited for that. Uh, so today we are going to get a bit deeper into our new program at the Mitchell Institute called Fundamentals of Healthcare. My name is Emma. I am the student recruitment officer. For those of you who don't know me, um, I'll just be kind of moderating this webinar. But the real star of today's webinar is our associate head of academic affairs, Lori Pepler Beachy. Lori, did you want to just kind of quickly introduce yourself? Sure, I can do that. I'm Lori Pepper Beachy, and as Emma said, I am the associate head of academic affairs. Um, I've had a long relationship with the Michener. I was actually a student at the Michener. I graduated out of the respiratory therapy program. Um, I'm not going to say how many years ago. Um, did a lot of, you know, work clinically, worked in healthcare regulation, and a lot of time spent in post-secondary education. And then I returned to the Michener as the academic chair for critical care programs, and now the associate head of academic affairs. So great to meet everybody today. And I'll throw it back to Emma just to finish our introduction, and then we'll get into our presentation. Thanks so much, Lori. All right, so I did wanna do a land acknowledgement. So the Mission Institute is, as you all might know, uh, in downtown Toronto. So we acknowledge the sacred land where we are today, which has been and continues to be the traditional territory of the Huron Wendat, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit River, among many other unnamed and unrecognized Indigenous communities. At this location, we stand on land protected by the Dish with One Spoon Treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and the Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. We recognize this agreement not as a thing of the past, but as a promise today and into the future. We must share the responsibility of ensuring the dish is never empty by taking care of the land and the creatures we share it with and transforming our personal and institutional relationships. This meeting place is still home to many indigenous peoples across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work and learn on this land. We urge you as future Canadian healthcare practitioners and leaders to acknowledge that it is our collective responsibility to strengthen our ties within the communities we serve and practice healthcare in a way that advances the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's seven health-related recommendations and practice your profession in that spirit. And with that, I will pass it back to Lori. Great, thanks, Emma. So I'm gonna start with the presentation. Emma's gonna run the slides for me. Um, and then we'll have lots of time at the end to answer any questions that you may have. So at the end, you can either speak up or you'll notice there is a chat function um, along the bottom of your screen. Feel free to um, put something in there, or there's also a question and answer um, section function down there. So feel free to put them in there, and Emma and I will try our best to answer those at the end. So we're here to talk about our new diploma program, which is the Fundamentals of Healthcare Diploma. Um, it's an interesting program, very different than some of the other programs at Michener. It is, um, one of its best features is it's quite flexible and it's self-paced. Um, and what that means is you can either engage in it full time, which would be, you know, five courses a semester, or you can get, engage in it part time, um, you know, say if you want to work alongside this. Um, it's a little customizable as well, which means while there are a handful of required courses, you will have the opportunity to pick and choose courses that are of interest to you to complete your diploma. So whether you intend to work in the healthcare setting or maybe you're thinking of this as a springboard to other healthcare education to discover where you might wanna be, um, this program um, will be able to offer you both of those. So here's a few of our program outcomes. And for those of you that don't know, program outcomes are sort of statements of a wide range of topics that will be covered across the diploma program. So you'll see them listed there. Um, there's a large focus on understanding the Canadian healthcare system. We know that healthcare systems are different right across um, many countries across this world. Um, and the Canadian healthcare system is no different. Understanding basic concepts in anatomy and physiology, also human body function and disease. So that's like, pathophysiology or studying diseases of the human body. 
Um, we'll look at healthcare communication, work with an interprofessional team. So interprofessional teams mean different professions all working together for the same goal, and that is providing high quality patient care. Of course, you're gonna to have to use a little bit of medical terminology, so that will be covered within the program, as well as a more in-depth look at what some of the roles are within the healthcare system uh, in Canada. Obviously, we wanna understand and, and support and deliver compassionate care, and there'll be a focus on how we navigate the healthcare system and how we coordinate patient care across the system. So a little about the diploma itself. It's a four semester program, which means it starts every fall. Our first intake is fall of 2023. So you, um, the first semester would take place in the fall, the second in the winter, the summer is off, and then the fall in the following fall, and then um, in the following winter. So really it's four semesters, but how you put those semesters together is up to you. We don't have a summer semester in this program. Um, and so you need 20 courses in order to receive your diploma. So whether you choose to do five courses over you know, two years or four semesters, that's one way to go about it. If you need to skip a semester or you just wanna do it part-time, that's also an opportunity to do that within this program. So what are the admission requirements? Always the biggest question. Um, admission requirements for this program are an Ontario Secondary School Diploma or equivalent. So if you were trained internationally or in another country, um, you know there are equivalencies for that and our admissions team can help you work through those. Uh, grade 12 English at a C or a U level or equivalent. Uh, grade 11 or 12 Math, C, U or M or equivalent and grade 12 biology, CU or equivalent. So I'd like to give you just an example of some of the courses that you're gonna see that help lead to those outcomes. As I said, we do have a handful of required courses and you'll see them on the screen there. Um, really, it's the basic anatomy and physiology. The healthcare ecosystem behind the, scheme, behind the scenes is that course I or that outcome I talked about, understanding the Canadian healthcare system, introduction to healthcare professions and the interprofessional team, um, infection control, healthcare communication, and a very basic fundamentals of patient care course. And as I mentioned before, there are a number of other courses that are available to you, and you do get some choice when it comes to here to make up the balance up to your 20. Some of the courses you can choose from are Introduction to Research Methods, Digital Health One, so looking at digital health's role within the healthcare system, Project Management, a, a really interesting course called The Future of Work in Healthcare, Future Proofing Your Healthcare Career. And it is about setting yourself up for success to work within healthcare. It will cover everything from essential skills to understanding how healthcare systems um, hire people, understanding the work environment within a healthcare um, institution, clinical behavioral sciences, fundamentals of leadership, community-based healthcare, and introduction to public health. A few more on this list, there's lots of choice. The program also has a healthcare observership program. This program is primarily online. In fact, you can do the entire thing online if you wish. But if you choose to engage in the healthcare observership program or course, that's offered, will be offered in both fall and winter semester starting in fall 2024. And it involves um, some job shadow days that take place at the University Health Network, um, along with other activities to help support that. And it's about discovering the various roles that exist within um, our healthcare system. It's more than doctors, nurses, allied health professionals. There's a lot of people that make up a functioning healthcare system. Ethics and professionalism, introduction to healthcare certification. So that's first aid, CPR, mental health first aid. An introduction to medical microbiology, if you happen to have an interest in 
you know, medical lab sciences, something like that. Introduction to health and disease, which is really looking at um, diseases of the human body. And there are many pathways out of this program. So, you know, there are a number of entry level positions within the healthcare setting. And I'll be honest with the health human resource crunch that we're under, if you watch the news, you know that, um, you know, the healthcare system is looking for people. There aren't enough people to do the, the various jobs. There are going to have to be some new roles within healthcare to help support some of the regulated health professions that already exist. And so there's great opportunity with a foundation in healthcare and foundational knowledge um, to move into some of these new roles or some of the existing roles that are, that are already in the healthcare system that perhaps are different than those frontline um, patient care positions. You have the opportunity to, app to apply to other Michener programs. Michener professional programs are very oversubscribed, which means we get a lot more applicants than we have spots for. So the competition in some of our programs is quite high. Um, we are creating pathways into a couple of our programs, primarily the medical laboratory sciences program, um, a new program in first discipline MRI and perhaps respiratory therapy, where graduates of this program, there would be a few opportunities for pathways to get into these programs. Now, it's important to understand though that, that in order to be accepted in those programs, you would still have to meet the admission requirements for those programs. It would just be, you know, a little bit of a pathway to get in and perhaps make it a little bit easier to get into the programs. And then of course, you can use this foundational knowledge if you're interested in any other healthcare program or anything else that might that um, might be offered outside of the Michener. So some of the program highlights, as I briefly mentioned, we expect that graduates will fill new roles within the healthcare system. Many of these are currently in development. They look very much like more of an assistant role in a variety of departments. So you might think about imaging assistants. There might be assistants in research departments. There might be assistants in um, outpatient clinics. Um, there could be assistance required in food services or facilities. Um, so many different opportunities. Uh, patient navigator and patient coordinator roles. These are really important roles that, you know, to this date are often done by regulated health professionals, but there may be opportunities to move into these roles um, without being a regulated healthcare professional to help support these um, important pathways for our patients. <clears throat> and then this program, um, we are in the process of developing an apprenticeship stream within the program. We anticipate it will be ready to go for the fall of 2023, but as I mentioned, it's still under development. And apprenticeship really means earning while you um, so if, you know, if uh, a student had been accepted to the program was interested in working in an apprenticeship, the opportunity would be there with some of our partner employers to hire you as an apprentice. You would work a few days while you still continued your studies on a part-time basis. Um, and our partners are quite interested in this. It's another um, avenue to help support the workforce that is much needed right now. So a lot more details to come on that, um, but we are expecting to um, offer that apprenticeship stream starting in fall of 2023. Pathways into Michener programs, I already mentioned that. Um, again, it's important to note that there could be a pathway in there, but you would still need to meet those admission requirements. <clears throat> okay, and you know what? That's the end of our slide. So um, happy to entertain some questions. I think we oh, the program requirements. Yeah, I'm going to go back to that. Slide. Yeah, if we could just bring that slide up, that might be helpful. The Zoom pop up woman. <laughs> okay. So here are the full admission requirements here. Uh, so I think this question from Cecilia was, does the English have to be for you or can it be C or M? So it can be C, U, or yeah. 
It can be C or U. I don't know if there's an M English, but I'm sure that would be fine as well. I know there's an M math, but if there's an M English, that typically is a mix of the C and U, so that would be fine. Mm -hmm. Another um, So Cecilia is asking about grade requirements as well. So is there a average that you have to meet? For this yeah, program? yeah. So this is a, a, as you know, it's a new program. We haven't set a minimum average. Um, so we will entertain applicants as long as you have the credit in those courses. We will review you. We won't, you know, turf you if you don't have a seventy or an eighty. Um, obviously, if we end up with more applicants than spots, we will have to rank by um, grade point average. Um, the other admission requirement that's important to think about is there is a CASPER um, uh, requirement. So anyway, more about that. But as far as um, as far as averages, there isn't a set average. <clears throat> And the CASPER that I referred to is, is an online assessment, um, not really a difficult test. It assessed some of those softer skills that we like to see in healthcare. Uh, oh, that's so, a good question. Yeah, it's a good question though, yeah. Yeah, so it graduated high school 20, 2007, it doesn't have an impact as long as you still have the, the transcripts, you can request those then, yeah. Yeah, that is correct. There's absolutely no impact at all. In fact, we do anticipate that we would get a number of applicants who perhaps are looking at second career options, right? They've been working in another area, um, whether in healthcare or not in healthcare, and they've decided, you know what, I want to change my career path and I have an interest in healthcare. So we do expect a number of those applicants. So I don't think you'd be alone in that. Any other questions for anyone? Put it in the chat or in the Q and A. Is the Casper test the same one as the one for medical school applications? Um, so it's not the MCAT, uh, but I think there are some med schools that do also require the Casper. I could be wrong with that though. Mm -hmm. So the Casper is a totally computer-based test, uh, and it tests kind of your professionalism, your ethics, your morals, kind of your responses verbally and written to different scenarios. Um, so yeah, it's not something that you can really study for, but there are a variety of practice tests you can take online. But no, it's it's not the same as as an MCAT test or anything. Yeah, and it, it's important to note um, all of our other healthcare programs at Michener uh, require a Casper as well. So um, as I said, it, it's an online. You don't study for it really. Um, people tend to do fairly well on a Casper on a Casper test. So. Nothing really to worry about there. So Colleen asked, like, can I register for the winter semester? Or do I have to register for the fall? Yeah, that is, that is also a really good question. Um, our intake is in the fall. So if you're applying to the program, you're applying for intake in the fall. Now, in saying that, if you know the fall is a struggle for you and you can't start until the winter, or maybe you can just take one course in the fall and then you know pick up full-time courses in the winter we can certainly talk about that but we only have one intake and it is in the fall so jenny's asking uh is there any options for like transfer credits for stuff like medical terminology or anatomy from yep. college courses yeah another great question jenny yes this program um we can apply it's called plar prior, prior learning assessment and recognition um so yes we can take a look if you've done anatomy and physiology and medical terminology at college certainly we would um review those once you've been accepted to the program and um, apply transfer credit for those. So yes, you can shorten the number of courses by doing that for sure. Good news. <laughs> uh, so if applicants don't have their OSSD, mm. are they eligible to apply? Yeah, so we do really uh, require the OSSD or an equivalent. So if you weren't educated in this country, it may not be called an OSSD. Um, there are a number of upgrading options, though. Um, I don't know them off the top of my head, but there are many upgrading options in order to complete an OSSD um, in order to the, apply to the program. 
Is there an option for a fast track? Another great question. Yes, the program is quite flexible. Um, you know, a full-time course load is five courses uh, a semester. If you have transfer credits, that would certainly decrease your number of courses. Um, but by fast track, we don't offer, you know, courses are offered in the fall or the winter. Um, so unless you have credit transfers, it might be difficult to finish it in under two years um, because you'd have to access those courses in the fall and the winter. Um, we don't offer courses in this program in the summer. But if you do have transfer credits or you've done some education before, it would absolutely decrease the number of courses that you um, that you require. And on that note about transfer credits, so is there a certain percentage of courses that have to be completed at Michener? So is there like a limit to like transfers? No, no not, that, not that I'm aware of. Um, you'll notice by looking at the courses, they're quite diverse. Um, I, you know, I think it would be hard to come in and, you know, have transfer credits for 15 out of the 20 courses. I, you know, I think typically we're going to end up seeing maybe maybe two, three or four courses being eligible for transfer credits. Remember when you're looking at um, course transfer or transfer credits or prior learning, you need to look at both courses side by side and ensure that the outcomes are aligned properly. And then there's also hours, but we like to see an alignment of program outcomes of at least 80% um, in order to determine whether that course is actually um, eligible for transfer credit. Uh, online or hybrid, great question. Um, the program is completely online with the exception of that one course I spoke about, which was the clinical observership course. That you would have to be in Toronto for. Should the apprenticeship um, stream launch this fall, that would also require you to be in Toronto or be able to commute into Toronto on a regular basis, on a daily basis, really. Is there a time limit for the program? No, there is no time limit for the program. Um, you can take five years to do this program if you wish, if you want to do it on a part-time basis. Some of the courses have prerequisites, but we've really structured the courses so that, you know, in order to take the um, health and disease course, you need to have taken anatomy and physiology, right? So um, yeah, so you can take as long as you want to finish this. Can you repeat that? The in-person course is called the clinical observership course. type it in the chat here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's helpful yeah. for sure. Any other questions for anyone? Some great questions. Those are awesome questions. Yeah. Actually. This, this is probably the most questions and the most chat group that we've had. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> which is great. Um, hmm, that's interesting. So, um, so Colleen's asking, once enrolled in a diploma program, can you get permission to take courses at another institution and apply it to the diploma? I'm currently working towards a great question. Yeah, it is a really good question. Um, you know, I think the only way this would work it, is through a prior learning assessment or, or a credit transfer uh, request. The problem with courses at another institution is there would have to be equivalent. So each course would have to, after you took it and completed it, then you would have to bring it forward and say, you know, I'd like to submit this for a potential credit transfer. If it aligns close enough to one of the courses in this particular diploma program. Um, the diploma program is designed very, very specifically to cover the attributes and the knowledge and the competencies that are required in a fundamentals of healthcare program. And so picking up, you know, random courses from other institutions and, and combining them is really a difficult thing to do. The other thing is these courses are um, sitting within a diploma program versus courses 
that might be sitting in a degree program. So other than credit transfer, no, they're not really able to be combined. That's a good question though. <laughs> it was a great question. Any other questions? Don't see any. Um, do you have the, uh, Emma, do we have this slide with the admissions? Oh, are all approved courses? Yeah, let me go back to the. Okay, good question, Colleen. Are all approved courses listed on the Michener website? So if you look on the program page on the Michener website, you will see that there is a list of courses there. Um, those courses definitely exist within the program, um, but there will be some more courses added. This program is currently under development. And anytime you develop a program, especially one as flexible as this, we may find that it would be beneficial to also offer a course in something else that's related. And so you may see, as you go through the program, some extra courses come up. You know, maybe in the second year of the program, there's a few extra options that you can take um, that are new courses that have been introduced. Uh, is there a max amount of students per semester? So the intake that we're targeting is about 28 to 30 students to start. If we get more applications than that, that are qualified, we'll absolutely take more. Um, the beauty of this is that it's offered in an online environment. So space really is not an issue. Um, so no, at this point, I wouldn't say there's a maximum. There's only one course that may have a maximum, and that is the clinical observership course, because there's going to be a limit to how many students they can take in a semester. And that is the reason that we're offering it in both the fall and the winter semester to maximize the opportunity for students to take it. Yeah, and about the uh, the slides. So usually we don't give out the slides, but I will be posting the full recording of this webinar uh, onto our website. So you can watch this as many times as you want after. So, yeah. That's great. Um, so we actually don't, unfortunately, have in-person advisor appointments right now at the admissions office. Um, but if you want to email, actually, I'll put up the emails oh, yeah here. that's what i meant if we could put up the uh email for admissions yeah um we'd be happy to answer your questions <laughs> over email uh but yeah unfortunately we're not doing any in-person advisor appointments right now so that that's really the one-stop shopping for all your admission questions and your yeah. transcript <laughs> questions and um if you email them they they get back to you very quickly the response time is very good um, and of course, if you need to talk to somebody in person after that, they, you know, we can arrange for a phone follow up, et cetera. If, if, you know, you really need that conversation, that's absolutely okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any other questions? Well, if that is everything, um, this was actually my, oh, another question. <laughs> oh, just thank yous. Of course, oh, you're, you're welcome. welcome. Anytime. Our yeah. pleasure. Yes, yeah, so this is actually my last slide. So uh, as Lori mentioned, mm -hmm. yeah, we would love to hear from you if you have any specific questions pertaining to your educational situation that you don't know if you would be eligible, we can answer those questions via email. We also have uh, these four social media sites that we're on where we update regularly on future webinars that are coming up or future events. So feel free to check those out as well. And with that, uh, we will close off. Have a wonderful, if anyone's having a long weekend, have a great long weekend or have a great rest of your week. And uh, yeah, feel free to email us if you have any questions that pop up in the future. And with that, we will say goodnight. <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.